Well, I, you know, I definitely think I'm inspired by just everyday objects and a lot of different people just in my life and What about um, some of the pictures here on the floor of uh, your family's plantation? Right, so, so there's definitely, so right, so I grew up in Kingston, but my father, my family has a farm in rural Jamaica, in St. James, in a place called Maroon Town. And yeah, and I, but you know, I didn't grow up with much exposure to that. And so as an older person, being introduced to that has been for me a really rich experience and sensitized me to the mental process of just reconciling different environments or my place in different environments. Mm -hmm. So there's there's that re that reconciliation between suburban upbringing and then kind of connecting it, I almost want to say reconnecting, but it's not reconnecting. It's connecting with this past and this, you know, just the land. And then reconciling, leaving Jamaica with being here in the U.S. And then again, while I'm in the U.S., reconciling, reconciling living in a city like Washington, D.C., that's just so cosmopolitan between going from there to where my in-laws are, which is Reno, where we spend a lot of time as well. And, you know, so there is definitely a level of consistency, you know, in my personality between all those places, but then there, you know, you kind of do have to reconcile it with the rituals, the things that people do on a daily basis when they go from place to place. I start by, with these photographs, and then, and then I, and then a part of the process that's important is just fragmenting the photographs and placing them within these abstract environments that I've constructed mostly by mostly from a love of the aesthetic of graphs and the lines that you get from graphs and the shapes that you get from graphs, charts, histograms, line graphs, that kind of thing. I guess I'm interested in the abstraction inherent in, in, in experience, the abstraction of experience and data that graphs are meant to do. That's the use of them. And then I'm also interested in the limitations of recalling memory from the photographs and the intersection of those two things. So it's almost like two different ways of looking at reality, the limitations of both of those ways of looking at reality and putting them both in the same picture of Where does that language of graphs and information come from? Um, I guess it comes from my background in, in the sciences and just having to always interpret all of your findings ultimately go right back down into a graph. So you, you observe things directly and immediately a lot of the times but then ultimately that has to be distilled in some form in which you and I would be able to read the same information out of it. But in doing that, a lot of the, a lot of other information gets weeded out and discarded. And so it invariably corrupts the original environment and the original, the original um, happening that occurred. Yeah, so I think there are more immediate representation of the process behind even these paintings on canvas where I literally fragment the photographs and place them in these um, current mindscapes, these abstracted mindscapes. So, um, but they're definitely more immediate. So you can actually see the process more in these than you can in the paintings because the photographs are actually there in their in their cut form, and they're immediately mount, they're mounted onto these painted shapes. And 
rather than have those shapes incorporated into the paintings, these paintings are actually, actually physically are those shapes. So, so, you know, so then the photographs are more literally, the photographs become the data. It becomes uh, the symbols in the graphs. So I, so calling it a performance piece, I just want to specify that I don't really consider myself to be part of that performance necessarily, but the audience members or people that I invite to actually do the action of cutting, deconstructing the canvas. Mm, was it a hard place to arrive at or did it? I feel like it just naturally flowed into this. So I mean, I'm basically just taking the paintings and letting them physically um, form this topographical space or volume. And so, you know, it's reminiscent of a landmass. And eventually the audience will come in and, you know, cut out fragments of them based on predetermined guidelines that I've painted on it. So almost like I painted graph symbols on there on it and then I'm going to have the audience members cut out these graph symbols and then mount them on the wall, but then have a light source on the inside of the frames and have the and that will definitely put that will then project a composition on the wall based on the pieces of the painting that have been extracted from it. Um, so I'm actually inviting people to to do what I've done with these paintings, which is just kind of extract things, extract pieces that I that are my focus, and then and then just kind of when they go on the wall, then they just become almost like these fragments, like like what I think happens when you when you make a graph, when you transmit transmitted data into a graph. So you know you end up with fragments of what the actual meaning and context of of what these things were. In terms of other artists, I am more drawn to people or to artists that can take things that are usually elevated in fine arts, really elevated in fine arts, such as line, color, and and shape, and take a lot of the by taking a lot of the importance off of them, highlight the poetry of them and just the beauty of them. So I would say artists like Cy Fonde, Richard Tuttle, people that can take basic things and just, rather than forcing you to see just how amazing these things are, to just like let them be. So, um, yeah. I'm also interested in artists that, that investigate systems, painters that investigate systems. Like, Julie Mary too. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Nice.